You're watching Tag TV. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Pakistan slammed at UNESCO for having DNA of terrorism. Indian leaders and diplomats call out Pakistan for sponsoring cross-border terrorism. U.S. State Department report blames Pakistan for advancing terrorism in Afghanistan and India. An Afghanistan president claims victory over Islamic State. Islamabad's support to terror groups in bringing unrest in Jammu and Kashmir is an open secret which led to the country getting slammed at the UNESCO General Conference this week. Pakistan was called out at the conference for having DNA of terrorism. Meanwhile, a latest assessment report by Indian Central Agencies revealing cross-border infiltration data at LOC also exposes Pakistan's malicious agenda against India. Pakistan has been relentlessly inseminating false propaganda against Kashmir at international platforms since the abrogation of Article 370 from the Indian constitution that gave temporary special status to the region. Pakistan's baseless propaganda has become a subject of irony because the country itself is the biggest source of chaos for the region. Countless infiltration attempts at the line of control and regular conspiracies for carrying out terror attacks in Kashmir is a planned strategy that Pakistan-based terror groups are using to target innocent Kashmiri citizens. These groups receive funds from Islamabad, leading to terror financing becoming a major threat in South Asia. Terrorism financing, well, terrorism in itself is uh, growing in South Asia, and the recent events in Kashmir are not doing anything to curb that. Um, the, uh, the main problem with terrorism uh, is the financing. And one of the main issues that we're facing right now in South Asia is state sponsoring uh, of terrorist activities. Islamabad's anti-Kashmiri plot received a befitting reply this week when Ananya Agarwal, the Indian representative at the 40th UNESCO General Conference in Paris, hit out at Islamabad for spewing venom against India. Mr. President, for us, the most important fundamental right is that of right to life. Globally, the single largest threat is this right to this right is from terrorism. Tragically, the reality facing us is that Pakistan is the world's largest producer and exporter of this evil. Pakistan's political approaches are rooted in terrorist violence and its global engagement is defined by mainstreaming of terrorism as an instrument of statecraft. Ask yourself the following questions. In which country were the perpetrators of 9-11 and 26-11 terror attacks discovered? Where were Osama bin Laden and Mullah Omar found? Which country is home to 130 UN-designated terrorists and 25 terrorist entities listed by the UN as of today? Which is the country where organizations such as Hiz Hijbul Mujahideen, Jamaat ul Dawa, Lashkar e Taiba, and many other banned terrorist outfits openly conduct their activities, collect funds from the streets, and run their offices with active support of the state machinery? Which country is a leader in aiding, abetting, and financing of terrorist activities? The army of which country massacred millions of its own citizens just because they spoke a different language? The answer to these questions is Pakistan. Indian representative in UNESCO further slammed Pakistan for seeing perpetrators of 9-11 and 26-11 as their heroes. She went on to confront the country for misusing the platforms of United Nations to peddle fake news, hatred and venom against India. Would this gathering believe if I told them that one of Pakistan's former presidents, General Musharraf, recently called terrorists such as Osama bin Laden and the Haqqani network as Pakistan's heroes? Pakistan is home to all shades of darkness, from dark extremist ideologies, darker powers of radicalization, 
uh, radicalized behavior to the darkest manifestations of terrorism. Mr. President, in 2018, Pakistan ranked 14th on the Fragile States Index. Pakistan's neurotic behavior has resulted in its decline to a nearly failed state with a weak economy, radicalized society, and deep-rooted DNA of terrorism. We condemn Pakistan's disappointing misuse of UNESCO to spew venom against India and politicize UNESCO. Pakistan has been using terrorism as its tool to target Kashmir. According to a latest assessment by Indian Central Agencies, three months after the abrogation of Article 317 Jammu and Kashmir, Pakistan-based terrorist groups have managed to infiltrate nearly 135 of their men into the valley. Indian security forces have till now identified over 25 entry routes along the Indo-Pak border in Jammu and Kashmir after the abrogation of Article 370. In 2018, Indian security forces neutralized more than 257 Pakistan-supported terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir. According to the Indian Home Ministry, there were 328 infiltration attempts by terrorists in 2018 to enter Jammu and Kashmir from across the border, of which more than half were thwarted. The fact that Pakistan serves as safe haven for some of those, uh, those terrorist groups uh, is in itself a problem. It's not the only one. Uh, and the, uh, the, the fact that some officials, including in the military, but some officials in Pakistan, they enable terrorist groups to engage in criminal activities, organized uh, crime, uh, drug smuggling, uh, gem smuggling from Afghanistan, uh, you have weapons trafficking as well, human trafficking, etc. That gives them, that gives those groups what they need, the oxygen, the need to operate. And that is the main threat that we are facing right now in terms of terrorism. Recently, the Indian security forces in Kashmir busted a module of terrorist associates in Pulwama and arrested four people who were involved in carrying out terror activities in the valley. It is pertinent to mention here that the Indian Home Ministry officially confirms that the launch pads and terror camps of Lashkar e Taiba and Jashi Muhammad are active in Pakistan occupied Kashmir. Pakistan, under the puppet Prime Minister Imran Khan, is doing everything to sponsor and export terror to India and other countries. The country is getting condemned at all platforms for propagating terrorism in South Asia. Indian Union ministers S.J. Shankar and Rajnath Singh called out the country for being a terror breeder, while Sayyid Akbaruddin, India's permanent member in the United Nations, highlighted the nefarious activities of designated terror outfits operating in Pakistan in a special event of the UN and Shanghai Cooperation Organization. There is little hope and prospect of Pakistan doing enough and concrete to contain terror emanating from its soil. Hitting out at Pakistan, Indian External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar said that the country has been building an industry out of terrorism to put pressure on India. The minister said that in the last five years, however, a different normal has developed and global conversation on cross-border terrorism have become more serious. This talk is about dogma and entrenched views are naturally strongest on the most perennial challenges. In the case of India, it will come as no surprise to any of you that this relates to Pakistan. Changes in thinking will trigger a debate and that has been the case for the past few years. The fact is that we have allowed the narrative to focus mainly on a dialogue when the real issue was stopping cross-border terrorism. In a separate ASEAN event in Thailand's capital, Bangkok, Indian Defence Minister Rajnath Singh called upon the international community to eliminate terrorist safe havens, disrupt their networks and financing, and thwart their cross-border movement to ensure sustainable regional security. Describing terrorism as the most heinous of cross-border crimes, Mr. Singh said, some states use terror to pursue political goals, making regional security vulnerable. It is so much worse when terrorists are aided 
abetted, armed, financed and sheltered by states. The interplay between states and non-state actors used as proxies to foment violence has worsened this menace. The persistence of state-sponsored terrorism is not just painful cancer, it is also the leading reason for unsustainable security," said Indian Defence Minister in his remarks seen as directed at Pakistan. Following Indian Union Minister's condemnation of Pakistan-sponsored terrorism, Syed Akbaruddin India's permanent member in the United Nations highlighted the nefarious activities of designated terror outfits by the world body. Speaking at the third high-level special event of United Nations and Shanghai Corporation Organization, Akbaruddin asserted that the criminal groups have joined hands with terrorists to boost illegal financing. UN designated terrorist organizations such as ISIL, Al Shabaab, Al Qaeda, Boko Haram, Lashkar e Taiba, and Jaish e Mohammed continue to destabilize entire regions through their cross border financing, propaganda, and recruitment, including by using, rather, abusing evolving global public goods such as the cyberspace and social media. Terrorist organizations are engaging in lucrative criminal activities such as human trafficking to raise funds. Criminal groups have joined hands with terrorists to provide illicit financing through drug trafficking, arms dealing, selling looted antiquities, money laundering and counterfeiting. Akbaruddin called on anti-terror financing watchdogs such as the Financial Action Task Force to take stringent steps to address issues of terror funding, illegal financing and counterfeiting. The terror crime nexus is an existential global threat, the contours of which are mutating every day, he added. The cross-border nature of such fused entities and their financing activities poses a serious challenge as coordinated international response is too slow to be effective in most cases. The foundation of a coherent response to issues of narcotics trade, illegal financing and counterfeiting lies in frameworks like the Financial Action Task Force that set standards with respect to combating money laundering. The terror crime nexus is an existential global challenge, the contours of which are mutating every day. To combat this menace, we will all need to keep ahead of the new trends and technologies, something that can only be achieved if we can work together with zero tolerance approach bereft of double standards. In spite of mounting global pressure on Pakistan, the country is doing nothing to arrest the dreaded terrorists and their leaders who are openly indulging in terrorism and instigating you to follow the path of terror. If Pakistan fails to control and combat terror and also to comply to the FATF criteria, it can be blacklisted in near future. The prevailing instability in Afghanistan is an outcome of Islamabad-sponsored terrorism since many decades. Pakistan may view a weak and destabilized Afghanistan as preferable to a strong, unified Afghan state, says a report by the independent and bipartisan Congressional Research Service. The report is of the view that Pakistan possesses selfish interests in Afghanistan and India, and these interests are highly malicious, which lead to increasing terrorism in the region. A report. The United States Department of State in its latest annual report accused Pakistan that on the one hand it voices support for political reconciliation in Afghanistan but on the contrary Pakistani establishment did not restrict the Afghan Taliban and the Haqqani network from operating in Pakistan-based safe havens and threatened the US and Afghan forces in Afghanistan. The report further takes note of India's long stand on terrorist groups like lashkar e taiba and Jaish-e-Mohammed, which are located in Pakistan and often conduct terrorist attacks on India with the support of Pak agencies.
I don't see any change um, when it comes to terrorism and the uh, state support of terrorism, neither on the domestic uh, level nor uh, international level. Um, here I will say that the Pakistani government uh, still identifies not only the security circles, um, uh, sp uh, speaking about military and ISI, um, all the civilian governments see uh, cross-border terrorism, uh, particular terrorist activities um, in the Indian Kashmir um, as a foreign policy asset. So um, this uh, has not changed yet, also in terms of uh, when it comes to Afghanistan, when you see uh, uh, the latest terrorist attacks and all the manner, the whole manner they got conducted is, there, uh, is a clear indication that uh, Pakistan has a certain policy also in Afghanistan by using terrorist assets. Further pulling up Pakistan on its undeterrent resolve in letting the unlicensed Habala money transfer systems to operate throughout the country, the report says that the money transfer system is being openly abused by terrorist financiers operating in the cross-border area. It illustrated the inefficiency of Pakistani government while stressing that some madrasas in the country still taught extremist doctrine and umpteen of them are yet to register with the government. They are out of the blacklist as of now, but that does not mean that they are out of trouble. They are still in trouble because now it is just a matter of four months and they have got to take all those actions to curb terror financing and to take action against those individuals who have been uh, uh, placed on uh, sanctions by the world body, like Hafiz Saeed, which they have not taken even now. A congressional research service that also released along with U.S. State Department report recognized Pakistan as the most important member of Afghanistan, playing an active, but by many accounts, a negative role in Afghan affairs for decades. Pakistan's continued request for release of security assistance and its facilitation of the U.S. talks with the Taliban received another major embarrassment when U.S. State Department in April 2019 had stated that the U.S. administration has not seen Pakistan taking sustained irreversible actions that would warrant lifting the security aid suspension. It noted that Pakistan's security establishment which is fearful of a strategic encirclement by India, apparently continues to view the Afghan Taliban as a relatively friendly and reliable anti-India element in Afghanistan. Moving on to Afghanistan, where President Ashraf Ghani is claiming to have captured hundreds of fighters from the Khorasan chapter of the Islamic State in its stronghold in the eastern Nangarha province. His statement came days after a prisoner swap with Taliban insurgents raised hopes of a lull in violence in the country, a report. Security forces in Afghanistan have obliterated Islamic State terrorists in the country, announced Afghan President Ashraf Ghani as after a prisoner swap with Taliban insurgents raised hope of a lull in violence in the country. More than 600 fighters from Islamic State, locally known as Daesh, surrendered with their families to the Afghan government in past weeks. Officials say airstrikes by Afghan and coalition forces, lack of funds and low morale have forced the group to give up. The Daesh were a cowl, man and not a team made on top of the world. Yawazi the Negra will sooner have a Yaki would defy Kuwa, the Negra Amnesati, our hit for Trump by our but master by Joseph the Kurdish people. The government says among fighters in its custody are foreign nationals from Pakistan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Iran, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan and the Maldives. Pakistan <laughs> 
قاتل ملا داده وات را که جنش کسات با افغانستان که جهاد و دنبال کرد مرتضی و کافر However, the Afghan Taliban, which has been battling IS and the government for control of the country, disputed that. Nangarhar, which shares a long and porous border with neighboring Pakistan, has long served as the main stronghold of IS. Insurgents from this region have planned and staged bombings around the country, especially the capital Kabul. Their attacks targeting foreign nationals and the minority Shiite community have killed hundreds. This strategy is a result of the attack. The government has been able to get rid of the attack. The government has been able to get rid of the attack. The government has been able to get rid of the attack. سلگونو خزی او مرشومان چه در مختلف هوادونو چه زیادی در پاکستان دی دارا تسلیم شون نو دا امکان نلری چه دیو دی دا افغانستان پر نورو سیمو که خپل زال تقویه که او یا زمون دا افغانستان نورو لایتونه دیو بی صوبات شون The Taliban controls more territory than at any point since the US invasion in 2001 including section of Nangarhar province the Taliban this week freed two Western professors in exchange for three of its senior leaders held by the government in a rare act of cooperation between the warring sides. The United States and Australia confirmed the release, voicing hope that along with other developments, it might improve chances for dialogue between the Afghans and an eventual peace agreement. India since long has been raising concern over Pakistan's unconditional support to terror outfits, the echo of which has often been heard at the international platforms directly or indirectly. To speak more on this issue, we are now joined by Mr. Anil Bhatt, senior journalist and an expert on security issues in India. Sir, India has often been saying that terror groups in Pakistan are just proxies of the state and its army and the ISI. Now, various reports from the United States and Europe also suggest the same thing. How do you see this, sir? And Lashkar e Toiba, then Harkatul Mujahideen, Harkatul Ansar, then Jashi Muhammad, these have been abetting terror because it was construed that the homegrown terror had affected Pakistan itself. So, it is an evident not only by one think tank, by several intelligence agencies, pan India. Uh, and also across the globe that Pakistan is the behave of terrorists, uh, that's, that's for it. Mr. Bhatt, why Pakistan always lacks funds for launching counter-terrorism action but has enough money when it comes to financing terror groups? They have been using those finances for uh, against uh, India, against uh, arming terrorists and aiding, abetting and training terrorists against India and also against Afghanistan. That has been proved. That's why the uh, United States, uh, States have of late been uh, criticizing Pakistan administration, Pakistan political governments who have misused those funds. And so to say that they don't have uh, uh, faith on Pakistan to fight terrorists because they have been more or less they have been carving out, they have been churning out jihadis instead of uh, bringing peace, uh, uh, stamping out that terror infrastructure in Pakistan. That has been proved and the United States has uh, uh, proved that and they have criticized that. Mr. Bhatt, do you think in the next FATF meeting, Pakistan will be able to prove that it has complied with the recommendations of FATF? Pakistan is trying to uh, bring its economy back on rails. It is trying to take measures. But its instability, economic instability is certainly not going to give leverage to them because you have a lot more. There was uh, recently an Azadi march which was against the Pakistan government. They want the Imran Khan government to resign. So on the other hand side, they have been uh, always raising Kashmir issue internationally, aiding uh, those, aiding protesters against India, financing that. While as at the core of Pakistan's economy, they don't, they don't generally put a focus on that. Thank you, Mr. Bhatt. 
And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Surbhi Sharma signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. You're watching Tag TV.